On today's special episode of In The Know, we'll be diving deep into chart of accounts templates with pro advisor trainer, Carla Caldwell. Carla will walk you through creating a template, applying a template, and editing a template so that you can get the most out of this feature. Hey, pro advisors, I'm Jacqueline, and you're watching In The Know. It's the show designed to keep you in the know on the most exciting updates to QuickBooks Online. So here's the scoop. Pro advisors want to work efficiently, especially when it comes to client setup. And Chart of Accounts templates help you do exactly that. This feature was launched in November of 2023 to all QuickBooks Online account users so that you can build and save templates by creating them from scratch, customize select ready-made templates, or even importing pre-existing templates. And once the template is made, you can apply it to new and existing clients. If you find this update helpful, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. So we'll turn now to Carla Caldwell for a deep dive. Carla, welcome. Thanks for having me. It's so exciting to talk about this. It is something that we are using in my firm. And so I know that a lot of people are really excited about this. So I want to dive right in and go straight into the product itself, because that's really what we want to see. So I'm going to be inside of QuickBooks Online Accountant. Now, you're going to notice over here on the left that I am actually in a QuickBooks Online Accountant, because it even says Accountant in the top left corner. I just kind of hid that little bar for a minute so that we could just look at this. Now, you might be wondering how I got here. You just go up to your accountant tools at the very top and go to the chart of account COA templates. Now, if you're wondering why you don't see accountant tools, it means you're not logged in as an accounting professional, which means you're using QuickBooks with your hands tied behind your back as an accounting professional. So make sure you're in, have the accountant tools, and then you can get to Q <laughs> COA templates. So these are the chart of account templates. Now, QuickBooks ships this, or if you will, ships uh, this with two templates already there, one for product-based uh, businesses and one for service-based businesses. And so if you just go ahead and take a look at either one of those, just go over to the far right action column and select edit. You're familiar with that. It's the same way that we go in the action column throughout the product. Um, and then we can edit this and go into it. Now, what you're gonna notice is that there's obviously a balance sheet. It's mostly for the P&L accounts that we're talking about that we use in our chart of accounts templates. And so here they are here and you can see that. You'll notice it's pretty much income and then expenses. But this is our service-based template. And so of course, in the product base, you're gonna see cost of goods sold and things like that. So the whole idea around these chart of account templates is that we all have certain types of businesses that have a pretty standard chart of accounts. You may even have certain niche businesses, for example, a nonprofit that has specific chart of accounts that they need. Or in our case, we actually have a real estate industry that we work with and we have a very specific chart of accounts we use with every one of those. And it is very prescribed of exactly what we want to see. So we have those chart of accounts templates set up inside of QuickBooks Online Accountant, QBOA. And then we get to use those with any new clients that we bring on. We can bring in that chart of accounts directly in there. You can have as many as you need. You just simply can add new templates in there. You can always get rid of any of the ones. Like if you don't like the ones they gave you, put your own in and get rid of those. And so you can really set that up exactly the way that you need it. So let's talk about a couple things in here. First of all, just simply going in and editing this template. It tells you that if you edit this, it's not going to update the chart of accounts where you've already applied it. Boy, is that good news, right? Because if you were to go change the chart of accounts here and it went and updated all the clients that this had been set up for, that would have been a little crazy. Um, so that is not happening. And so I like to get this message to remind myself, because if I don't do this often, I start to panic a little bit. So I kind of like the reassurance that I'm not about to mess up an actual client's books. I'm just affecting the template, which is really important uh, for us to remember. You can give that template name, whatever you like. And oh, good news for a lot of us. We want to have those account numbers in there. You simply add that in and you're able to um, have account numbers in there as well. So that's totally fine. You'll notice the actual real name here of what that of that account is going to be. 
the type, the detail type, all the things. You guys know how to do all of those things. So I won't belabor all of that. But if you wanted to, you could add a new sub account. And so, of course, it has that little indent just like you would expect. So all of that works out just fine. And if you hit that button by accident, don't want it, you hit the little trash can. Of course, we all know what these little buttons are. That's going to make a copy of it. So you need to have checking and then you can put in savings, things like that, and then just simply save that. And remember, the template's not going to affect clients. It's already connected or it's already created for you. Um, you also have the ability to add a new template, just start from scratch. Nobody wants to do that, but you can if you need to. Um, you also can just import that in. So you could actually bring in a CSV or Excel file to import those accounts in. And so you could take one out of QBO that you've been using for years, been waiting for this template uh, area to be created for you, export it out of that client, tweak it, and then bring it on over here by just simply importing that in. So super simple to do. Now, what we want to make sure that we talk about is how do we apply this template and why would we do this? Would we do this to a client that already exists in QuickBooks? Well, it just depends. You know your clients best about when you might want to do this and when you wouldn't want to do this. We brought on a client just literally earlier today. I was just talking with him and his CPA. We were talking about um, their business and he's about to start over again in, in this year because his books were needing a little love and attention. Let's just say it that way. So why would you put a template on an account that already exists? Well, our client already had their QuickBooks file, but now it needs to comply with how we need it to run. So we're actually going to go ahead and have their QuickBooks file, give it the TLC, clean it up, and then we're gonna apply a chart of, a chart of account templates to it so that it now complies with what we need to do. So it's just a little easier than having to manually add them. And we can always still tweak that once we get back into QBO. So I could literally go in and say, OK, I'm going to take this one and apply the template. And then I would be able to select which client that I would apply this to. And it shows me all the accounts that are here. So what's going to happen? What if they already have opening balance equity in their system or whatever the case is? Well, the cool thing is, is that when you apply a chart of account templates to one of your clients accounts, they already have QBO. It's already set up, might already be functioning. If you apply the template to that, any accounts that already existed in their chart of accounts remains. They don't get changed. This will include things like opening balance equity and accounts payable, accounts receivable, any of those default accounts. So what's going to happen as far as a duplicate is concerned? Well, let's say that they already had security deposit in their books and it was set up exactly like this. Well, it would actually go in and create a second one and it would just put a dash one at the end of the account name. Because remember, the account names always have to be unique. So if this already existed, set up just like this, it would just add another one and just put a dash one in there. So that is what happens if it's exactly the same. So what happens if security deposit was set up as a other um, asset or a, my brain just went completely dead? It wasn't a current asset. It was a long term asset or whatever the case is or a fixed asset. They put it in as whatever the detail types are different. If an account in the template matches the name and number of an existing account, then it would um, put the dash one. Otherwise, it would create another account for them. So if this one was different, then it would add that one. Obviously still has to have a dash one because they can't have the same account names. So those are the things that it's going to do. Um, the whole idea is the accounts that exist already are not going to go away. You're not going to all of a sudden mess up their whole financial statements and all that. That's not going to happen. Now, I know you're probably like me and you're like, well, I don't know. So test it out. If you're like me, you need to have your own sample company that you tinker around with that is part of your subscriptions in QBO. I have one of those because I like testing out stuff like this and just needing to see it a little bit before I use it on a real client. Do that. That is a great way to learn. So I would encourage you uh, to have a, a company that you tinker around with and check integrations and all that and check it out with this chart of accounts templates as well. So here's the deal. You're going to be able to create as many of these templates as you want. You can apply them without completely going 
scared that it's going to mess up everything. It's not. Worst case, you have a couple duplicate accounts in there if they were the same. Otherwise, it'll just add new accounts for you. Um, and the great thing is, is that these templates are now available for your whole team. So even if you're not the exact person that's going to set up a new client and apply the template, your team members will be able to use these as they start setting up or updating other clients. So I think I've covered everything that I can think of right now, but if I talk too fast or they want to know more information, there's also a guided tour up here as well, Jacqueline. So if uh, they want to go check that one out, they can also. Carla, thank you so much. This is phenomenal. I think you did the perfect job of giving the ProAdvisor community a look and the voiceover of the functionality they can expect with Chart of Accounts templates and also the benefit of tapping into this feature. So thank you so much. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. We'll catch me. you next time, Carla. Thank All you. Right. Bye. Bye. And thank you for watching this episode. I'm Jacqueline, the host of In the Know and leader of ProAdvisor training and certification. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe so that you don't miss a single episode. We'll catch you next time.